Hey, this is John Twining from the Life Sciences Program at Eastern Nazarene College and for the One Biota Network. Today I want to take just a few minutes to show my students and anyone that's interested how we measure frogs when we are doing frog research. I research frog bioacoustics, uh, the sounds that frogs make in Costa Rica, and we also work with a lot of frogs here in New England when we're out working on labs uh, or doing field, student field research projects. Now, why do we want to make measurements of frogs? Well, the key reason is that the morphological characteristics, the, the characteristics that we can view on the outside of the frog are often helpful in distinguishing one type of frog or one type of species from another type of species. And so we make measurements of the length and the mass of the frogs as well as some of the lengths of the limbs or the width of the head because those characteristics help us be able to tell one type of frog apart from another type of frog. And that's really important when you're doing field work because if you're saying that you're working on this particular frog, you don't want to find out later that you misidentified it and it's actually this type of frog. And these field measurements can help to distinguish between those two species. Of course, if you really want to know the difference between two species, you probably need to do some work uh, to analyze their vocalizations because their vocalizations should be different and also genetic analysis uh, to look at their DNA and that will distinguish one species from another as well. Now, if I'm going to demonstrate to you how we make these measurements of frogs out in the field, we have to have the right equipment. So let me show you what equipment we use when we're going out in the field to make measurements, morphometric measurements of frogs or other species. The first thing we're going to need is a pair of calipers. Now you don't have to have calipers. You can use rulers or flexible rulers or tape measures, but I find these calipers to be pretty accurate and I like to use these. So we're going to use these today and it's pretty easy to use. You can just increase the distance between these two points. This one will be zero and this will be your measurement point uh, by rolling this little roller on the side and of course it can uh, zero in on a particular measurement. The next thing we're going to need is a way to measure mass and so this is a Pasola scale and we can use the Pasola scale um, by attaching the frog to this little clip here uh, inside of a Ziploc bag and the, the weight of the frog will pull down the scale and we'll be able to measure the mass and grams on the scale on the side. The final thing we're going to need is some gloves. There's many uh, scientists that recommend that when you're working with amphibians you should use gloves because the oils on our hands or cosmetics or any chemicals that we've touched can cross from our skin onto their skin and amphibians have a pretty thin skin that's permeable so we don't want anything that's been on our hands to affect those frogs in any way. And of course we're going to need one more thing for this demonstration. We're going to need a frog and this is Felix. He's a white's tree frog from Australia. He's part of our uh, animal collection here in the life sciences program and he's been a great ambassador to help us teach kids from all over the South Shore and even down into Rhode Island about amphibians and uh, Felix uh, has just been a great frog to work with. So we're gonna work with him today. He's gonna help us demonstrate how we make the measurements of frogs in the field. Okay, now that I have Felix in the bag, I can put him on my hands and kind of put a thumb on his back just to make sure he's not going too far. And take the calipers and I can measure from the front of his body, which is the snout, to the area right between his hind legs, which is called the vent. And you kind of want to keep him flattened out a little bit. And then I can read from the calipers that he is 84 millimeters from snout to vent. Next, I'm going to take the bag and I'm going to uh, clip on the Pasola scale. And I'm going to let that hang. And notice I'm holding this uh, on this little handle at the top. 
I don't want uh, to influence the measurement in any way by holding on to the scale itself. And if I look at this, I can look at the scale on the side and I can see that he weighs approximately 52 grams. No, sorry, 62 grams. Okay. And then of course I would need to take him out and weigh the empty bag and subtract that weight out to get just the weight of Felix the Frog. Now the last thing I wanted to tell you about was how do we sometimes determine the sex of the frog? And to do that, um, it would be pretty complicated to do it with any degree of accuracy, but on many frogs, if you look at the tympanum, which is the eardrum, you can actually um, look and see how big that is compared to the eye. So on many uh, male frogs, the tympanum is as large as or larger than the eye, and on females, it tends to be smaller than the eye. So that's one way that we can figure out if uh, it's a male frog or female frog for some species. If you are one of my students, now it's your turn to practice these measurements. You can either work with one of our live frogs or you can use the model frogs that we will make available to you. Grab a set of calipers, a spring scale, a Ziploc bag, and some gloves and practice making the morphometric measurements I demonstrated for you. So that's how we make measurements of frogs out in the field. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click the like button down below and give me a comment in the comment section. Let, tell me what you liked about this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so you'll be kept aware of when we post new videos. As always, this is John Twining for Eastern Nazarene College and the One Biota Network, and I will see you again on the next episode. Twining out.